Okay, this is uh, human, humane, humane uh, architecture, and uh, our principal guest is our principal host, <laughs> Martin Despang. He's uh, an architect in Germany, with multiple offices in Germany, and he's a professor of architecture here at UH Manoa. It's great to have him on his show. Welcome to your show, Martin. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> Thanks for switching <laughs> things here. <laughs> so we're going to call this coffee counter mm, counterculture communication, CCCC, uh, here on uh, human humane, humane architecture. I want to talk about coffee shop design in, in the smaller context and in the larger context. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, so what, and, I, and I'm going to use the word gestalt instead of design. So what is good coffee shop gestalt, Mr. Architect? Um. Well, first of all, maybe we should give the audience a little bit of a background where we are. So we're in Thanksgiving week here in Honolulu, and it's a little uh, cold for us, cold week, right? So it's a little breezy, little little showers here and there. Gets as cold as it can. So what better can one do what we're doing here right now? Having a good warm coffee, uh, a coffee table, some coffee table books, and communicating culture over coffee, yeah. right? Communicating culture over coffee. Yes. Coffee counter culture communication over coffee. Yeah. C Whoa. Counter might, might mean because we recently had an election and um, ever since I'm thinking about when societies are in trouble, they need to talk more than ever before. And I remember my own culture, that other half of us Germans, uh, that used to be in communist hands and, and that was brought down peacefully by no blood spilled and it actually happened because people were talking over coffee and other beverages too, it wasn't limited <laughs> to. And um, so, so... Coffee is important. Coffee is important. culturally important mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's part of the human experience. But, but first, I mean, taking all that together, and I want to go to your book also, um, what, give me a, a definition of good coffee shop design or gestalt. Mm -hmm. Let's have picture number one to make that case. And we have um, pictures to make the case. Because this is something you remember actually. And, and it even says on top, Hawaii's most beautiful coffee house. So that's a statement, right? And uh, having done some research, both of us, this is uh, by one of my favorite uh, Hawaii architects, Pete Wimberly. He was a Haole guy who came here and was just like, amazed by everything here, how different it is. And rather than superimposing where he came from or uncritically sort of mimicking what he found, he was blending the two. And blending is a good term, we know from the coffee business as well, a good blend. And from the human experience in general. Mm -hmm. so, so he was doing that. And if we show the other pictures, maybe number two as well from, from Pete's uh, coffee shop, there was a place that was, that was iconic. Uh, not only because of coffee being served there, but because of all that iconic design. This sort of blend of cultures, uh, this kind of, um, here's a picture, must have been from the original days. It was built in the 60s, and it was unfortunately, it is not anymore, which is, by the way, the nature of, not necessarily if you make a building, then you should be more careful about tearing it down, but usually the, the kind of the duration, how long sort of, um, uh, you know, interior design lasts is usually, unfortunately, only six years, then it gets torn down. Thinking about the waste that, that goes with that. Um, but this place here, uh, you know, used to be, and sorry for being so blurry here, that was uh, shortly before uh, I think I, I, it, got, it got torn down. But there was, there was something uh, embodied. So um, the architect basically made, um, made an event and, and materialized and spatialized the event of, which is a pretty profane. I mean, drinking to coffee is, you know, by itself, you know, it's just something basically keeping us um, basically hydrated. So you could say this is one of the basic uh, needs of human beings. But, but he cultivated that uh, through architecture. And obviously, some people must have thought, or maybe it was just branding, this is the most beautiful coffee house um, in, in Hawaii. Well, I'll how, tell you how, about how do you it. remember I, that? Please? It was, yes. uh, it was uh, near where I lived mm -hmm. at the time, and I'll tell you a little about it. You know, when you walked in, you could see, you know, the, you could see the soaring mm -hmm. lines mm -hmm. of, that, of that capula there, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, but ba basically, it was, a, 
it was a big counter mm -hmm. and uh, some tables, but mostly people went to the counter. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was the Hawaiian style of all night, you know, open all mm -hmm. night, all mm -hmm. day, all mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. Well, they came there from everywhere. It was in the intersection between the community in general and the burgeoning Waikiki that mm -hmm. was being developed at the time. And it had a parking lot, you know, oh, for the good old days when mm -hmm. restaurants had real parking lots. And people were there all the time. And they mm -hmm. met there. Mm -hmm. You know, certain coffee houses have the power of magnetism. Mm -hmm. You know, they draw politicians. They draw businessmen. Mm -hmm. They draw people who need to meet other people. It was a meeting place, Coco's. The food was, you know, it was okay. But all these, when, this was not the only one. There was another one called, called Tops, yeah. mm -hmm. a few week, mm -hmm. a few, uh, mm -hmm. a few miles away, or a few blocks away. Um, but, but I think uh, Coco's was the was the the, the king of them all mm -hmm. because of its size, its design, mm -hmm. and its location. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was a popular place, and it's too bad it was it was lost. And I put to you the question of, uh, you know, how you said 60 years is the useful life of the design? Six years. Six years? Oh, yes, my goodness. Yes, Six yes. years. Okay. Well, clearly, it came to an end. Um, uh, and I think mm, that's because Hawaii was changing. Mm -hmm. And this kind of use of space, the large parking lot, it was a large restaurant, mm -hmm. although I don't mm -hmm. think there's many seats in there. Mm -hmm. um, um, things had changed. And, and, and it was not the highest and best use. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then, then it was, a, a, I forget what it's called, uh, Peter Morton's place was a restaurant there for a while, mm -hmm. failure. Mm -hmm. And um, gee, I don't even know what's over there now. I know what's over there what's now. Over there now? It's the Hard Rock Cafe. Hard Rock Cafe. There. That's mm -hmm. the Peter Morton's place. Mm -hmm. Hard mm -hmm. Rock Cafe. It was mm -hmm. to me. Uh, I was never inside that place. Yeah. I never thought much of it. And the Hard Rock Cafe is is one of the most corporate, you know, things that you can find. They're all themed basically the same. Well, they're, they're maybe customized a little bit. They got the the thing, the VW 181 in front of it, which says we're in Hawaii, we're surfing. But pretty much it's a corporate design that more or less looks the same. Certainly applies to this here as well, to this device here, which uh, we can find in that nature everywhere around the world. The color, the design, that term that we try, it's appropriate for this because this is design, right? Is, is more or less the same. And if we can look at picture number 11. You told me there was a story for each one of these. So before we go to number 11, mm -hmm. uh, what about Coco's? What's the story? Well, Coco's, uh, I think if we still can go to 11 because it's part of the sure. story. I mean, Coco's was what you just described, perfect description. We should make you teach uh, architectural <laughs> theory in, in our school, by the way. I learn everything I know from you, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> learn from each other. So this coffee mug here, I'm not absolutely sure um, uh, if, if it is actually from Coco's, but it's, it's from one of these uh, stores. You can see that is Gestalt. Whereas this coffee mug here, where we have on the table, is design. This is branded, pretty much. But that other coffee mug is, is made from scratch as an, as an idea. Someone really emerged in the idea, OK, we're going to serve coffee in Hawaii. So that coffee mug has to look exotic, archaic. It, and it, also Hawaii. It, exactly. And, and that was, you can also call this, and I think this was America was about, in general, I allow myself, and I wish I would have been here at that time, and you can tell me. But to me, and Hawaii in particular, through these architects, um, these exotic architects, was a total piece of artwork. I mean, the design and the culture in general reflecting, uh, being reflected, embodied through design and human behavior and event was consistent at that time, right? I mean, there was a certain level of sophistication. I'm thinking about the other picture about JFK cruising through his then a year after it becoming tragic, uh, Lincoln convertible through Kalakaua Avenue, right? And you can see the architecture, the pioneering 60s architecture on steroids. You can look at the people, what the people wore, and you can look at the cars. And you can certainly look at someone like JFK with, don't want to go there into depth, you know, but it certainly was someone that Germans at that time looked up and said, oh, this is oh, a president. Oh, everyone did. Everyone. This is I a president. Remember. He's cool. And he was in an open car. Yes. That, and there was, 
his strength and ultimately his fatal weakness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I remember seeing him, you know, uh, tool around Manhattan mm -hmm. in an open car, and everybody loved it. They stood there. They could actually see a president mm -hmm. only a few feet away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It turned out to be his downfall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, we're looking at the message now, and um, what's emerging here is that the, the coffee mug and the coffee house makes you, among other things, want to have coffee. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? That's yeah. one thing. That's certainly true, yes. Yeah. That's certainly true for Starbucks, who is, uh, has geniusly invented the culture of Americans actually coming together in public. Right, I mean that that's a phenomenon. So they do that too, but they don't they don't necessarily narrate their coffee shops. They don't tell stories. They don't get you. We have this coffee mug, you know, the Coco's coffee mug. Let's just call it like that. That's something that makes you dream, right? That's that's seducive, right? This is like, oh my God, I feel like I'm in the jungle. Where's <laughs> Tarzan? Where's Jane? You know, where's the hula girl, right? You well, don't in, in those days, there were a lot of objects in Hawaii like that. Yeah, yeah, and you don't, if you go into Starbucks, you don't have these feelings anymore, right? No. No, you feel like you're in corporate coffee. Exactly. That, exactly. That would be uh, coffee, corporate coffee, that, uh, counterculture. That's uh, five C's. Communications. Then. That's five yeah, C's. That's five, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not the same thing what we're talking about. No. So no. go to another one now. Well, the other ones that we're sitting in right now, and, and another one actually, uh, two that my family, Ohana Architectural Business, had the privilege to design for, for my hometown. And we pretty much approached it like architecture. For us, this is bonsai architecture. The only difference to sort of like exterior architecture, you don't have to deal with a roof that you have to make leak proof, right? But everything else better be not decoration, not being surfacial, not being, by the way, coffee beans sort of taking pictures of a coffee bean and printing out a poster. There is that shop number five basically uses uh, real coffee beans. They're laminated between two panes of glass. They're seated in a bed of silicon, transparent silicon, mm -hmm. and that silicon gives the aura for backlit LEDs. Mm -hmm that uh, basically transition in the range from orange to red very subtly so uh, only color. only if you see that sit there like for a longer time you see that it's the color and it, it's a definition of your environment mm -hmm. and again uh, it goes to suggest to you that coffee is good have coffee this is you're in a special place mm -hmm. a temple of coffee mm -hmm. if you will mm -hmm. which is dedicated and different than any other kind of retail or restaurant um, situation yeah. because we're dedicated here to coffee mm -hmm. and coffee has a symbolism mm -hmm. and and when we come back from this break i want to explore with you what that symbolism has come to mean you know in the last what 100 200 years mm -hmm. because it's not simple it's oh. a symbolism that's not simple oh we'll be right back all right can't wait For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We are uh, here live on Mondays at 3 p.m. and we bring guests like our best health coach, Elena Maganto. Uh, eat well and follow her tips. Viva la comida saludable. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Aloha. My name is Reg Baker, and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. We highlight success stories in Hawaii of both businesses and individuals. We learn their secrets to success, which is always valuable. I hope to see you on our next show. Aloha. It's Martin and me talking about coffee. The coffee uh, counterculture communication. <laughs> Together, we're examining the gestalt of coffee shops, and we'll also be ultimately and very quickly, we'll get to exactly what all that means in our society today. Okay, but let's go through some of the other uh, 
coffee shop designs you've done, Martin, mm -hmm. uh, which are identified in your book. This is Martin's book. I'm not kidding. Look at the book. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you the side because I want you to see how <laughs> thick the book is. <laughs> it has lots of stuff about coffee shop, and it is called Best of Coffee Shop Design, which I would say makes Martin an expert in coffee shop design. And we have him right here on Think Tech. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, and. Why don't we then, only because you make me, because I didn't want to show them, but you make me one, and you're the host today, so you, I better do, I'm the guest, yes, I better behave. absolutely. So number five is, is a close-up of that uh, coffee shop with, with the beans. And there's also the beans, we had the struggle with, like, there should be tasting little things, and they, the way they had that before, they looked like urns. Like someone got you could do that. But someone you do got, that here. got cremated, you know, and you don't want to you don't want to dig into that. Yeah, no, so no, we no, no. that was a detail how we did that. And the next picture is number six is um, is a certain coziness, kind of caves, creating caves. That metal mesh is elusive to that beautiful sky in the areas where they grow in Costa Rica and in Africa where they grow coffee. You mm -hmm. got that glowing sky mm -hmm. that gives the bean the aroma. So it's elusive to that. In this sky you can sit as you can see here. It also looks like you're inside the bean. Yeah. Yeah. That's like you could have named the shop inside the bean. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Didn't okay, have didn't have control over that. That was the Klein. <laughs> so this is sort of the how it all comes together. Uh, the, the floor itself is one of my research areas. It's thermally uh, modified wood, so you heat wood up, so you almost like roast wood. So this is a synonym to roasting a bee and roasting the wood. Uh, next picture, and this is in, uh, in, in a partly indoor area here. I hate to say it's a mall, and I would have never thought I would ever design in a mall because I don't want to support it. That's what's happening, though. It's happening, but we still wanted to, g even though there is a roof, there is a sky, uh, we gave it additional skies, and this is that metal mesh that sort of cocoons you. It gives you some kind of enclosure, but it's still open enough so you feel the breeze. You can do this outside here in Hawaii. By it's the another way. element, isn't it? it so is. it's, it's tasting the coffee, wanting the coffee, a uh, special place for the coffee, but it's also, it's, it's cocooning you. Yes. It's giving you a little privacy, mm -hmm. a certain quality of mm -hmm. intimacy. Mm -hmm. you know? Very much. Perfect architectural crit you are, Jay. Mm. So you get, you get the job to be a uh, theory teacher and, and history <laughs> teacher. So this one is the predecessor of, of the other one. This is the first one we did. And later on, I'm going to show a, 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 a container for, uh, for coffee that I grew up with because where, I, where my parents rented a space at the ground floor, there was a coffee shop that went bankrupt. And so we acquired these containers that's on uh, uh, image 14. And so I grew up with these containers and had this ambivalent uh, sort of to the right, had this ambivalent relationship. Um, what you see as beans is just a fake front. It's empty behind or filled with coffee beans. And I was throwing pennies in there and driving my parents crazy. So I liked it as a child. When I was in architecture school, I started to not like it anymore because it was too nostalgic for me. And I wanted to be a modernly trained architect. Mm -hmm. Only later to come back and revisit that and back to uh, maybe we go to page 12 to then make this uh, make this back uh, sort of uh, piece of furniture out of it where where these openings these alcoves these caves are clad with very simple off-the-shelf sheet metal brass sheet metal brass mm -hmm. and so um, going to the the, the, the the what you see there this uh, this this color that matches perfectly your the white in your shirt, Jay, right? That crema color, that crema, that le, that le color is, is vinyl. This is probably one of the most uh, uh, sort of uh, materials that no one would use if you have a choice, right? Your landlord puts this in your bathroom if he wants to be on the cheap side, right? We say there is no bad material. You can basically cultivate vinyl, and that's what it is. We were, we're operating on a very tight budget. That counter you see there, I, you know, I had never designed a coffee shop before that. And we like to take on things that we've never done because then we're young and fresh and open to things. Once I looked Stay up... Stay that way, Martin. I try. Once <laughs> I looked up what a counter costs, a new counter, that would have eaten all the budget. So I asked the client who inherited that coffee business, shop business from his father, 
And they said the old one is in storage, and the old one was from the good old days. You see all this sort of oh, curved glass. Oh, what a beautiful glass. thing! And we basically gutted that, stripped it down to its bones and essence, and we reclad it. So it's about repurposing. I get two things I want to mm -hmm. stop you with. One is, uh, it seems to me that there's uh, <clears throat> there's two uh, opposing forces in all of these designs. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the uh, the pedestal mm -hmm. of the coffee making experience mm -hmm. where the staff is there the counter is there whatever form it is mm -hmm. where the food and and coffee is there where the signs are there uh the shelving behind all of that mm -hmm. and that's on one side and it's divided mm -hmm. by the counter it always mm -hmm. is and, and look mm -hmm. at this mm -hmm. starbucks mm -hmm. i think uh, starbucks uh, is calling now yeah it could be they're <laughs> calling for coffee um <clears throat> And, and the other side is the seating side. Mm -hmm. And the seating side often faces the production side. Mm -hmm. So you have this kind of dichotomy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's one thing. I, mm -hmm. I think that's probably so in most of these designs. It is in this one for sure. Mm -hmm. The other thing is furniture. For, we haven't talked about furniture. Mm -hmm. But you know, you have got to be selecting the furniture for yeah, these, yeah, yeah. these shops. And the furniture mm -hmm. have to, has to offer a certain quality yes. of experience. What yes. does it have to offer, Martin? Uh, um, so I make this difference between these days you would select the furniture out of catalogs and buy it. In the old days that we look so much up to, the Pete Wimberley days with these coffee mugs, everything was custom designed by the architect. So all the furniture you basically, most of the furniture you see in these coffee shops were designed by us. And that goes back. Uh, we could. We should probably be inclusive when we talk about coffee. There's some tea drinkers who don't, we don't want to alienate. Fair is right? fair. Yeah. So there's one of the most beautiful tea uh, places, tea shops I've ever seen is in Glasgow by the arts and crafts master Charles Rennie McIntosh. I mean, the level of detail, sophistication, everything is custom designed. Because these people make talking total piece of artwork, we include the culinary part. So. When you are proud serving a quality product, you want to do that in a space that it lives up to that, of, to that level, right? Let's, let's, let's go there now. Mm -hmm. Let's go there now. So coffee shop is more than coffee, and it's mm -hmm. more than the Danish yeah. in the coffee shop. Um, and it's, it's more than the furniture, and it's more than the presentation. It's more than the cocoon-like intimacy or anything like that. Mm -hmm. The coffee shop is a place to communicate, mm -hmm. to talk. It is essentially a kind of public space, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And you have to achieve uh, an environment that allows people to talk, talk freely, talk for a long period of time, mm -hmm. to exhaust their thoughts, mm -hmm. to talk frankly, to take on, it, it is part of the democratic process. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. It is, and if you can get picture 17, which is a perfect illustration of that, this comes from another country, culture from France, right? Where that's pretty much in, in most, and you've just been in Portugal, which is not that much different there. Yeah? And that's the culture of basically, People sitting outside all the time, sitting there a lot. It's not about processing people through. There's one conspiracy theory about uh, the corporate coffee, the ones we just called Starbucks, that they, they chill it so down to sub-zero temperatures in there so people leave and new ones come in and buy again because otherwise people sit there all day, which is great for communication and culture, but bad for business. Mm -hmm. But the people are smarter. They actually uh, go and buy winter clothes that you usually don't need in Hawaii, but <laughs> there they come in handy, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, so it's about that. But going back to that picture number 17, yeah. it's really about what you say. It's about cultivating communication. And the space we're in is either supporting that or basically handicapping that. So that's the plateau for good coffee shop design. It is not contradictory to business because if it's designed well, people identify better, they feel better, they get stimulated through design. And then basically they're gonna, you know, if they not stay longer, but they come back, they come more often because they can identify with a place. Well, you know, but your point is uh, well taken about say Starbucks or 
standard corporate American coffee shop, they don't want you to be there a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, in the traditional, in the kind you're designing, and the mm -hmm. kind in Paris, mm -hmm. um, they want you to be there as long as you want to be there. Mm -hmm. You can spend all day there for mm -hmm. a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You can leave uh, your empty cup there for hours and mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. the, the waiter will not trouble you about yes, that. This yes. is a beautiful part of the coffee mm -hmm. shop culture. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that while you're there and meeting people, meeting people is a big part of it, yeah. and having this exchange, you're actually engaging in a, in a civic process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it goes back to ancient Rome. Uh, it goes back to, uh, what's his name, Michael Kimmelman mm -hmm. and public spaces. He's mm -hmm. the architecture critic for the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Which uh, we should have one here we in should have, We should have him here mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the human condition, especially in a, in a large community, mm -hmm. uh, requires the opportunity for you to enjoy your neighbor, enjoy other people mm -hmm. um, in the non-intimate uh, non, uh, space. Uh, space yes. of a public space, yes. and uh, too frequently in our time, and mm -hmm. we are evolving away from public spaces. Mm -hmm. it, it takes a struggle. That's what Michael Kimmelman is all about: mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to come back to public spaces and build public spaces yes. that are interesting and so forth. And I suggest to you that a coffee shop is a public space. It's an extension of a public space. Mm -hmm. It is part of what old Rome, ancient Rome, was talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. in terms of developing real real interaction between its citizens. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, this certainly has the touchy part of the commercialization of communication, right? So you got to, but I have to, and I never thought I would give credits to the corporate, but I have to say the, the Starbucks that was on and now it had moved because they're m remodeling that on Seaside and Coheo, that big financial center, what's that called again? They're remodeling that. There was a Starbucks in there. And that Starbucks was the, the neighborhood and the living room of many people who otherwise would be, would be on the street. And they were tolerated and sipping there on two iced teas, which is the cheapest. And they became part of the community. And they were not alienated. They were not told to leave to make place for you know, more uh, you know, higher paying customers. So I have to say, maybe because our public civic responsibility is failing providing spaces like that maybe the corporate had to step in uh, you know intentionally or accidentally i don't know i, I hope it's, they it's, see it the same way it's, it's just an observation so well let me offer that um you know in our time especially uh in in the new administration to follow on january 20th we have to have communication, interaction between our citizens. We have to return to the kind of democracy where people talk to each other, developed and expressed opinions and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been, you know, it, all the world over, uh, a place, you know, uh, food and drink, and especially drink like coffee, call it a convenience drink, if you will, but it can ri rise to great quality. Yes. Um, it's, you know, an essential part of the, of the human condition. Mm -hmm. But I give you this, and I'd like you to respond to it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just as easily as we can have that positive um, Roman experience of public spaces mm -hmm. and coffee places, mm -hmm. oh, there's a great name. <laughs> we can we can also we can also we can also plot and scheme mm -hmm. and plan crime and conspiracy mm -hmm. and and revolution mm -hmm. and all manner of really bad things in coffee shops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you respond to that? Just as it can be a positive experience for the human condition. It can be a negative one, can it? Um, certainly can, but I'm putting, we, we start with a C's and we're closing with a D's. I put design slash gestalt and democracy. I think, I think talking is never a bad thing. You can talk about bad things or you can have bad manners in talking, but once you talk, you already dissolve the problem. Because you said before, you, you shared with me, you don't believe in social media where you actually don't. You might talk, but you don't communicate. So communication is key, as they say. And we can facilitate that architecturally and spatially. And we want to just, the show should, I haven't brought anyone here who is actually, you know, has the best coffee shop on the, on the island because we want to encourage. And maybe not the corporate one, but the little coffee shop owner is to basically, you know, uh, take take a risk. And uh, there are lots of talented, not me, That's uh, what young, we need here young, young architects here who can basically make this a great project. Great art form. Right. And, you know, the great challenge, and I leave you with this, Martin, mm -hmm. the great challenge is architecture is, uh, it, it affects your, your mood, your environment. It speaks to you. 
Um, it, it, you inter interact with architecture, mm -hmm. and it creates uh, perhaps an environment for you to think in. And maybe if we could only do this, maybe you can do this, we can get the architecture in these coffee shops to help you think positively. Mm -hmm. Whoa, we will. there is a challenge. I know you can do it. Thank you, Martin. We will do it. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for the excellent uh, food for thought over this Thanksgiving coffee.